Taking a brief for the hiring manager is one of the most important parts of any recruitment process. If you get it wrong, you'll waste a load of time, you'll get really frustrated, um, and your hiring managers will probably get quite frustrated as well. Um, my name's Lee, I've been a recruiter for the best part of 20 years. I've worked agency, in-house and RPO, um, and I've taken quite a few hiring manager briefs in my time. And I thought I'd pull together this video of just sharing some of the, the best practice and tips I've picked up over the years. So firstly, you should always turn up to the brief prepared. You should do your research, whether that's using um, market mapping tools like LinkedIn Talent Insights, Horsefly, or many of the other different types of tools out there. You wanna get an understanding of what the market looks like, what the available talent pool looks like. Because what that allows you to do is you can then turn up to the meeting fully informed, you'll have a good idea of what the market looks like. And then it, that can also help you influence the hiring manager. So for example, let's say um, you've got the JD, you run a market, market mapping exercise and you pop in all of the essential skills and that brings down the size of the available market to say 20 people. There are only 20 people who could potentially do this job. You can then take out some of the essential skills and you know play around with it to see what that does to the talent pool. Because then when you sit down with the hiring manager, you can have an informed conversation and you can say to them, look, if we look for everything that's on your wish list, there's probably only about 20 people on the planet that can do it. Which of these skills are more desirable than essential? And you can have that conversation, which then gives you a better chance of going out and finding the candidate that the hiring manager wants. Um, it helps set expectations as well. Even if the hiring manager won't budge on the essential skills, by going to that meeting prepared and telling them what the market looks like, you are setting expectations. Whereas if you go in, you take the brief, and then two weeks later, you come back to the hiring manager and say, oh, there's only actually about 20 people on the planet who can do it, then it looks like you're making excuses. So do it in the briefing session. Get your market research done and make sure you take it to that session with you and be ready to share it with the hiring manager. One of the other things you want to do before you go to that briefing session is dive into the ATS and look at the historical hiring data for that role. You know, look for data points that tell you how long it took to fill, how many candidates were interviewed, how many candidates applied, and what was the offer acceptance rate like? You know, did you have to offer three candidates to, to fill the role once? Um, how many candidates were pre-screened? How many applied? Go through the whole recruitment funnel because then that will give you an idea of what the process looked like last time, because then you can sit down with the hiring manager and you can discuss that. And then that leads into having a good think about the types of questions that you want to ask um, during the brief. So questions such as, you know, last time you recruited this role, how did it go? What went well? What didn't go so well? What do you think we could do this time um, to do things better, to improve things? And then when you're getting into the nitty gritty and trying to understand exactly what the hiring manager is looking for, don't ask about types of experience or types of companies that the ideal candidate might have might have worked for. Um, that's a mistake that a lot of recruiters make. They'll sit down with the manager and they'll say, "Oh, so what type of what type of company will will this ideal candidate have worked for?" Um, and I'll go and reach out to to those types of people. Um, you're just setting yourself up to, to fail if you ask those types of questions. The types of questions you want to be asking should be more skills-based than experience-based. Um, again, questions like how many years experience should they have is, is nonsense. Rather than asking about the type of experience that this candidate needs to have, um, ask them about the skills. What skills does this candidate need to have to be able to perform this role at the level required? Um, and then they'll start telling you the types of skills that the candidate needs. And then ask them why, you know, why does the candidate need to have this skill? You know, what will it enable them to do um, in the day to day of the role? Um, how often will they need that skill? You know, will they use it all the time? Will it be every other day? Um, why is it so important that the candidate has this skill? And then what you'll find is as you're going through the list of skills and requirements that this candidate needs to have. A lot of the ones that were initially um, listed as essential, it might turn out that they only need that skill to perform a very small percentage of the job. In which case, you can then just say to the hiring manager, look, given that they're going to spend less than 5% of the time using this skill, do we need to find somebody who's already got this capability? 
or is it something we could train somebody on? And then your shopping list of requirements gets smaller and you get to, you know, the nitty gritty, the, the bare essentials of what you're actually looking for, which as a recruiter, obviously makes your life easier, but two, it gets the role filled faster and it gets the hiring manager set up for success and it stops you looking for a needle in a haystack. One of the other questions that a lot of people don't ask during the brief with the hiring manager is why would somebody leave their current role and come and work for you because there's a pretty good chance right if you're going to be sourcing or you're going to be headhunting the the types of candidates you're looking for are already going to be employed they're going to need a good reason to leave their current employer and consider coming to work for you um, and when you ask the hiring manager that question a lot of the time they'll really struggle to to articulate it what you might find is they start giving you um, some boilerplate um, USPs about the company culture or it's a great place to work or we're working on some really exciting projects. Now, one of the things I like to do with my hiring managers is when they do give me that boilerplate response, I'll ask them, imagine I'm your mate. I am capable of doing this job. We're having a beer, we're having a coffee convince me to come and join your team. What are you telling me? And then you'll start unpicking the actual USPs of the role and the reasons why somebody might actually leave their current role and come and work in this one. Don't just accept boilerplate responses um, as, as USPs. And one of the other questions that you need to ask is, who do you know? Who is out there in your network that you've worked with before, um, that you've met at events or meetups or whatever, you know, who do you know that is worth me reaching out to? Because a warm referral, a warm recommendation from a hiring manager is always going to be worth following up on. So make sure you put some real thought into the types of questions that you're asking the hiring manager and, and don't be afraid to push back and challenge. You know, if the hiring manager starts insisting on things that are totally unrealistic, use the market mapping data in the ATS data that you, that you pulled before the briefing session to help have that conversation. One of the other things that you might want to consider as well before the briefing session is prepping the hiring manager for that meeting. You know, if you're doing some research and you're doing some preparation beforehand, shouldn't the hiring manager as well? Um, so what you might want to do is before that session, send them a loose agenda. You know, these will be the types of questions that I'll be asking. Um, these will be the types of things that we'll talk through. That gives the hiring manager some time to think about the answers and get the most out of that briefing session. Um, so don't be afraid to send them a loose agenda beforehand with an idea of the types of questions that you'll be asking so they can put some real thought into it. Um, and then at the end of the briefing session, what you want to do is you want to agree how you're going to work together, right? And this is where you need to use your skill as a recruiter and your understanding of the market and all of the data points that you've pulled um, to, to lead on that, really, um, and not be um, subservient to how the hiring manager wants to work. Now, depending on the type of role, you might say to the hiring manager, look, I will, I will catch up with you once a week to give you a progress update. Or if it's a really urgent role, it might be, look, let's do two 15-minute stand-ups um, a week and we can update on that. It might be one of those roles where you know full well if you write a really good job advert, you advertise it, you'll have enough candidates by the end of next week. Um, so you you know use your knowledge and use the data points to inform how you're going to work together because what that does is it sets expectations with the hiring manager as to when they can expect an update. And it stops them chasing you for updates um, because, you know, you want to be focused on filling the roles. You don't want to be focused on hiring managers chasing you all the time for an update. So it could be quite as simple as at the end of the meeting, you might say to them, look, today's Tuesday. Um, I'll have an update for you on Friday. That buys you three or four days before you need to give an update. It might be, look, today is Tuesday. I fully expect that by a week on Friday, I'll have a shortlist for you. And then go and deliver the shortlist, shortlist on the Wednesday or the Thursday. Um, you know, under promise and over deliver, always. And then once the brief is over, um, what you want to do is everything that was discussed in terms of the requirements, the ways of working, what the interview process is going to look like, all that good stuff, pop it all down into an email, send it to the hiring manager, just to ensure that you're both on the same page. Yeah. That's important for two reasons. 
one, making sure you've understood the brief, but then two, you've got black and white evidence of what was discussed in the brief should the requirements change further down the line. You know, and that's a quick summary on how to take a hiring manager brief. Um, to read the full article, visit my blog, therecruitingplaybook.co.uk. Uh, make sure to subscribe as well, because I'm going to be doing more videos like this on, you know, sourcing skills, um, data analytics, market mapping, writing job adverts, um, all the skills you need to be a really good recruiter. Um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. And um, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Cheers.